Hello and welcome to week seven, day five. We're going to be talking about writing equations of vertical and horizontal lines. And I kind of debated where to put this uh, because really the issue is that vertical lines are always x equals a number. And that means that we can't actually really put them in to either slope intercept form or point slope form, if I'm thinking of this correctly. Like both of those forms really need there to be um, a y because even if, even if your slope is zero, right? Well, we could put a zero where slope is, but the fact that vertical lines are up and down and have an undefined slope, like you can't put undefined into point slope or slope intercept form where M is. You can't go, well, M is undefined, so I'm just gonna put a U there or, you know, something like that. That's what I'm trying to get across. So frustratingly, a lot of times like books or teachers will, in a set of problems that tell you to put things in slope intercept form or point slope form, they will also have vertical and horizontal lines. And technically horizontal lines can fit in either of those, but in some ways they're almost their own thing because horizontal lines of course are y equals a number. So I, I decided to just like kind of separate it out so we could see what it looks like. And so I only have on the instructions, write the equation of each line. I don't say what form to put it in because basically you're putting it in to the form of a vertical line or horizontal line. You're either saying x equals or you're saying y equals. Um, and so I guess the notes here uh, that I want you to fill in if you're into that sort of thing is, is um, horizontal lines, you know, draw yourself a picture of what horizontal looks like. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero because the skier has zero fun and they're always y equals a number. So as we look at kind of examples, we've got some that are telling us the slope and a point and we've got some that are showing us a graph. I would hope because of us graphing these uh, fairly recently that three and four actually would be pretty straightforward as soon as you remember which one is which, right? That vertical is X. All we gotta do is actually come down here and say, well, what is this number it's going through? It's going through negative three. So the answer to this is X equals negative three. And for four, we go, okay, it's horizontal. So it's Y equals. And so it's Y equals one, you know, voila. But it does require you to remember, you know, that because they're vertical and horizontal lines, they're special in that you only need X or Y in the number. Um, and you also have to remember which is which, right? That X is up and down and Y is left and right. And that's opposite of what we normally think of with X and Y. When we have information like on one and two, it should tell us by the slope whether it's vertical or horizontal. And then to know what number it equals, we have to look at the point. So for instance, on one, the slope is zero. Well, zero slopes are horizontal lines, so this has to be y equals a number. So then I go, well, how do I know what number? You obviously could graph this and then see what number it's going through. Um, but hopefully you'd realize pretty quickly what I'm about to tell you, which is that if the point it goes through is four negative six and it's y equals, then y has to equal negative six uh, because nothing else makes sense uh, in this situation. If you have a point four comma negative six and you have a horizontal line going through it, it has to be a y value of negative six. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or not. I feel like either you'd be like, well, duh, you didn't even need to explain that. Or you'd be like, that was complete gibberish. So let me know if you want some help with that. And then on two, the slope is undefined. So in our heads, we got to get used to thinking, okay, undefined, that's the weird one where the skier has an undefined amount of fun. He's, it's, so it's up and down and that's X equals. And then to figure out what X equals, we look at our point, but this time we're going to look at the X because if I am trying to get the line that goes through one comma three, if this is one comma three and it's a vertical line, guess what it has to go through on the x-axis? It has to go through one. So this is x equals one. And that's all there is to it. And on here are just vertical and horizontal lines. So I am hoping that this is actually really 
uh, really quick and easy for you. And then, you know, after this, we will definitely be doing some where vertical and horizontal lines are mixed in with our normal diagonal lines. And that makes it a bit trickier because then you have to be uh, paying extra attention, right, to, to whether or not I'm sneaking in a vertical line on you. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.